Hi, my name is Angela Kessley and I'm here at Toronto District Christian High School and some students are helping me to prepare a video to show you how to transform a milk bag into a sleeping mat for people who need them who live around the world in impoverished countries. So the first thing I wanted to show you was that we collect milk bags. We collect millions of milk bags. They come from all different schools in the metro area and actually in New Brunswick as well. So when you take a milk bag from your kitchen fridge, you will see that inside it is actually very wet. Okay, this wet, if you leave it and just flatten your bag, becomes very smelly, okay? So what we do is we open the bag and we just leave it on the kitchen counter for an hour or so and what will happen is the water will evaporate and your bag will then become dry and it's not, uh, it's ready to bring to school. So what your kids can do is probably take your bag, flatten it. Please don't send them to school like this, okay, because it takes a lot of people many hours to flatten milk bags. So just tell your child they must take their bag flat to school, maybe fold it up, put it in their knapsack among their books, and then they'll start their collection at their school, your church, your office, wherever you are uh, having a collection. So what I want to show you is how that we start to cut the bags. So the first thing I do is I have a flat bag. I fold it in half lengthwise, and then I usually fold it again. Now, if you are at a school or working with young, young children, uh, maybe even if you're working in a Girl Guide uh, pack or something, you will use scissors, and what you will do is you will cut the bottom of your milk bag off. You'll cut the raggedy top off. Okay, and then you'll just cut the bag in half. And what you have now are two what I call fat loops or wide loops. So I scrunch them up, I keep one down, I take another one, and I put it inside and it makes a T. Take one side, put it into the other, grab it, and pull. We keep doing this over and over until you have a long chain of these fat loops. Now normally, when I am going to weave a mat, I only make about seven to 10 chains, and this will make it easier for when we're doing the weaving. If, the, if this line is too long, or I'm gonna call it yarn, if our yarn is too long, then it's difficult for weaving. But this is the school method, or the child method. If you are an adult, I want to show you how I cut bags at, with about 20 at a time instead of one or two. So I have a stack of milk bags here, okay, and they're all flat and together. Again, I fold them in half. I put my bags on a quilter's mat, okay. I have a tool here, which is a quilting, we a quilting wheel tool, okay. This is extremely sharp, so I don't want children using this because they'll cut themselves. Okay, again, you cut off the bottom. You cut off the raggedy top. And you cut that in half. And you have now just cut 20 bags or 40 loops, which is very easy for us to get through a lot of bags quickly. So again, I still have the fat loop, and if I wanted to add it on to this one here that I started, we have the line down, we take this piece, we put it in, so it makes the T again, put one side into the other, and pull. And this is all that we need to do. It becomes very quick after a while, and I find if you have a classroom and you have some kids who are cutting and you have some that are tying, then they are preparing the ropes for the people who are doing the weaving. One day when I was cutting bags, I realized that if you cut one or two bags, it doesn't make very much trash. But if you cut hundreds and thousands of bags, you make a lot of garbage. 
because that little bit off of the bottom and the raggedy top causes you to have all this trash. Now, what happens is I've been to Haiti twice and down there they do not have garbage pickup. So with the women, we're cutting bags down there because I've sent hundreds of thousands of bags down there for them to work on as well and to make their own things. These pieces of plastic go flying in the wind and they become pollution. And I thought that's the last thing I want is to be known as a polluter by sending all these milk bags down to these foreign countries like Haiti. So what I do is I make pillows. And we have pillows like this. All this fabric is donated from an upholstery company. And every year that they change their fabrics, uh, they donate their, their samples to us. We, cut, we uh, cut them up and sew them and make pillows. And the stuffing inside the pillow is actually our plastic trash. And believe it or not, the more that you stuff inside, the cushier the pillow becomes and the softer it is on your head. So all of this would be put in here. Somebody gave me a donation yesterday of over 350 empty pillow cushions. So anybody who needs some, you just let me know and I will give them to you. And there we go. All of this is taken care of. Then all you have to do is just fold your edges over and with a needle and a small piece of thread, we sew this up. And with every mat, we send a pillow so that the person who's sleeping on the mat actually has something comfortable for their head. Now remember when I was telling you um, about tying the loops together. And at one point I said seven loops is good. Maybe even 10 is nice too. But when you are loading your frame, you need to have a specific number of loops, not a certain size as in when people ask me how wide the frame is. I told you in the, in the last segment that it was only 42 nails wide, but this is where I'm going to tell you how long it is. So I have seven loops tied here. What I do is I take one loop and I put it on a nail and then I take it over to this side and I put it onto this nail. Okay, these become the width of our mat. Now, I actually call this loading the loom and I call these stringers. So again, I'll put it on the nail and I go across to the other nail. Once I've made 42 rows, because I have 42 nails, then my mat is ready to be woven. Now, for example, if you had a small frame, I'll use this board again. Let's say you wanted it three loops wide. You would put this here and if I had three loops wide and I went from this nail, now I know this is not nailed down, to this nail. 